Hi everyone, welcome to episode 17 of SEO Tales. My name is Etamar Blau. I'm joined by Craig Campbell and today we're going to be talking about the marketing funnel and this is a really, really important topic. I think no matter kind of what your stance is in terms of digital marketing or marketing in general, marketing funnel is something that's always there and you need to be able to understand it and know how to sort of apply your disciplines in a way to drive users down that funnel. So Craig, obviously you are very successful in what you do, obviously from, from your past and your experience. So what, in terms of your perception of bringing say your audience down the marketing funnel, what sort of things do you kind of look for in terms of your, your targeting or at least in the understanding that you have of your ideal customer? Um, obviously, my audience has changed over the years. Um, you know, at the moment, I'm probably not doing too much in the way of marketing funnels because a lot of the stuff I put out is for information only. Um, whereas someone like your good self, who's starting out in the world, who wants to get more clients and and do that type of thing, you you have to think about a funnel and how you're going to get a client from showing an interest in SEO to using you as the go-to guy for SEO. Um, you know, as I say, I, I, I'm just at a different period in my life where, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to be educational with my blog um, rather than trying to get more clients as such. And, and by all means, clients is good, but I don't, I'm not strongly focused in the market funnel just now, but whereas in the past, you know, when I've had an agency and stuff, you know, the job is obviously to, to get them on board, get them as a client but I think you know the <coughs> marketing funnel thing stretches far and wide you know I think there's there's people out there who look for our type of services and you'll you, you, you get this all the time if you're uh, you know looking for new clients and they literally business owners still have no bloody clue what it is we do and I think education and, and educating these guys that it's not a push button exercise is a, is a great starting point you know and i think getting people on board whether you start your funnel off by demonstrating your knowledge in a video or, 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 or a tutorial and getting them on board to show that you actually know what you're talking about and go into the the <coughs> the ins and outs of what you're trying to do whether it's you know seo social media whatever um and i think that's where it starts but you know, how do you get them onto your videos first and foremost? Mm. And then what happens when they watch your videos? Where, do, where does it go next? Do, they, do you Facebook pixel them and show them more stuff? Um, and that's where you need to, you know, really choose the, the kind of funnel of where things go and what you want, you know, the, the journey that you want to show these guys down. And for you, Obviously, I think you're the perfect example here, um, purely because you know you're you're starting out in your journey of, you know, starting out in your own, and you know the job is to to get clients and show that although you're a young guy, you know you you have um, years of experience and can be a guy that can implement these things. And how do you do that? You know, the, even just now doing something like this is part of your funnel. Um, whether you, you 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 might be doing it for other reasons, where you might go, I want to get my name out there, or I want to do this, or whatever. But <clears throat> what you're essentially doing just now is getting people to know that Itamar knows what he's talking about, and then it's a case of where do they go next? Do they watch more of your videos? Do they jump on a free course? You know, how do you get those people to into your funnel and, and be able to educate them, and then show them that this job can't really, you know, as a business owner. You can't really do it yourself if you are working on your business. So they want to delegate certain part, parts of that to you. And that's, you know, there's there's a million different ways to get them into that funnel, whether you offer them a free course, whether, you know, you do, do some videos and pixel them and, you know, get them onto an email list or whatever. But, you know, what what are you doing? Because obviously you're at the start of your journey. What What is your thought? What goes through your head when you're thinking, Right, you know, I'm on, on videos and stuff and I'm getting a bit of exposure now. How am I going to capitalise on that? You know, what are you doing? Yeah, so I think that the way you've described it is is really good, actually. And I think to answer the, the question about, you know, how I'm approaching this, I think the funnel fundamentally starts with the awareness. So 
you need to have a way, a medium or a platform for people to see the kind of content that you've gotten or the kind of experience and the expertise that you have. And I think it differs for, for each person because depending on your industry, still a lot of people use search to search for things. So they use search in order to get that awareness, right? So the people who rank highly, um, they will attract a lot of the, the awareness of these prospective customers, right? So I think uh, when we're focusing from an SEO perspective, at least, I think it is still really important um, because SEO, having good SEO, is what helps drive not only the first kind of stage about the awareness, but also the interest as well. So if you've got a website that clearly details what exactly you've got going on, and I'm in the process now, like at the end of this week, I should have um, a few service pages up um, on my site as well. So you you kind of need to be ticking multiple boxes, I think, to drive people down the funnel, I think in as little or as an easiest of a way possible, because you know, people don't have the attention spans anymore, say, for example, to see my video one day and then kind of come back the next week and be interested and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy was on this. Uh, let's kind of see what they have. I think you need to be able to get someone from being, you know, spreading awareness, which is what I'm doing, I suppose, on different uh, you know, video platforms, on different podcasts, creating blog content, being active on social media. So all of that for me is what is driving more awareness but then as soon as people land on my website that's where i want people to go down that funnel so um i think it's not even just the awareness part right off the bat i think with the type of content say that we're doing here showing information knowledge you know if somebody is watching if a business owner is watching that and they're getting value from that then they're already going to be at least kind of more invested i suppose in in the person right so you can actually drive people down multiple stages of the funnel from only doing one thing, if that makes sense, instead of having to do multiple different things. And I think that's the biggest focus I have because people just don't have the time anymore um, to be. So if you don't capture these multiple stages of the funnel, people just forget about it and go elsewhere, which is why I suppose in my case, I'm trying to provide as much value as I can to hopefully persuade people as to why they should invest in me as opposed to a competitor. Yeah, but what what are you doing once you once you get people on the videos and they start to know your name and you know you're appearing in same Russian and you know blogs and, and whatever else you, you, you're doing with your time, you know, when someone lands in your website, what what is there an email sign up? You know, what what is the what are what things are you trying to do to get them into that funnel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, what I try and do is I try and get people to know who I am, what I can do for their business, and then for them to take action and schedule a call with me or to uh, take a look at the, the kind of services that I offer and then schedule a call. So it's all down to pretty much once they kind of know who I am, they've heard me speak or they've seen what I've written, it's more about saying to them, hey, let's not waste any time here. You know, you I could be helping your business out you know, schedule a call with me and, and we go from there. So I think it's trying to kind of force that early in a way. So mm -hmm. because people just aren't going to spend the time, um, you know, they're not going to spend hours kind of digging, you know, into, into me as a person. So if they've already kind of been introduced to me through seeing my other stuff, then it's like, you know, we're go we've got to the point now where, you know, we can be on a call together and then we can discuss further and then it becomes more of a personal selling thing for me. So that's what I try and push. Um, and for me, that's worked quite well because I've been getting more consistent uh, calls with prospective clients. And I feel like that is better, I suppose, in terms of the way I work because is, I work. Is call free, by the way? Just sorry to cut you, but is that call free of charge, the initial one? Yeah, yeah, because it's, you know, it's a 30-minute call. And I think within 30 minutes, there's a lot that you can discuss. And I think, you know, for me, I've got that 30 minutes to persuade somebody as to why I'm the best fit for their business. So, you know, I feel like as as part of the, the funnel in a way, I try and only have it in a few simple steps, right, to make it less complicated, I suppose, for, for the business owner. Because, you know, let's face it, a lot of business owners, they're not overly tech savvy. So it's like I don't really expect all of them to be even typing in on Google 
for for what they want because th their searches might be quite strange or they might not understand the very technical terms. So as long as somebody can get on my site and very easily be able to talk to me, whereas I can explain the things to them in their language um, and, and make sure that they feel comfortable at least with the information that I'm giving them, then for me, that's much better in terms of actually getting the lead um, from these types of calls. So yeah, it is a free call and it's 30 minutes. And I think, you know, in terms of that, it's, it is worth it uh, from my perspective. I think the important thing here, uh, or the point that I'm trying to make, is sometimes you've got to offer something free, though, to get them into that funnel, whether it's a 330-minute call, whether it's, you know, everyone's got to utilise different options. And I think the call options are a great option just now. A lot of people are offering, you know, a free consultancy call or, a, you know, a free 30-minute intro call or whatever. And I think that's, uh, you know, sometimes you've got to give away to then get these people into the funnel. But after that, I quickly want to understand, and as I say, I know you're um, at the start of your journey, your journey and your funnel's probably not perfect and it will change over time. Um, but what happens after that initial call? So, you know, Joe Blogs phones you up, says, hey, Tamara, you know, I, I like what you've said on all of these things that you've been on. You know, you seem like you know what you're doing. Let's talk about my website, and you you talk about a few different bits and bobs, and maybe where you can help. Um, and then the the guy buggers off, and you don't hear from him for a week. What happens there? Does he does he go into an email list, or or, or you know uh, you know what what are you doing to nurture that? Because you've obviously got what you wanted the initial call, but we all know that you know talk is cheap sometimes people will will talk to you for half an hour and then disappear and not because they're they're ignorant or anything but they, they may get busy again and and things like that so i think that the next important step is the follow-up sequence to your funnel you know what are you doing then to to nurture that guy do, do you follow up manually by an email saying hey man we spoke two weeks ago just want to see how things are going do you hop on another call with them what, what, t tell us more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. And I think it varies depending on the person and what the call is for, uh, because the types of call I get are varied. So some people literally just want a bit of help, a bit of advice, which I'm all for. Um, and if it's that case and, you know, I've given the person advice and if I know that they may not necessarily uh, want to bring me in, I suppose, for maybe like a monthly a consultancy gig or something like that or some people they'll say they're like okay i need to check how much our budget is da, da, da. Um, but the first thing that i try and do in those types of calls is to get the person to give me a review um, on gmb because i think that's really valuable for me so that's kind of one of the goals i would have i suppose if it's a type of call where somebody's just looking for some advice and they're not really too sure about if they want to take me on for for some kind of project um, but if it is, let's say, somebody who is interested in, in my services, then I will just do an email outreach just manually after a week or two weeks. Um, and I think, you know, do I need to schedule another call? If they were very willing, if I could see the intent there from them, um, then, of course, I could hop on the call And because I think speaking is much better um, than sending out emails. But you know that my process would be in that scenario just to send an email out after a week or two and it doesn't have to be long like you you were kind of saying before it's just kind of wanting to 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 catch up and and see if there's anything um that that can be i suppose that i can help them with in their in their situation but yeah i think it's it's the kind of approach sorry let's see though that what you're doing just just a hypothetical example because i want to put you in the spot here Mm -hmm. um, to understand how your brain works and what you would do next. So hypothetically, you do that call, you get the guy, conversation goes reasonably well, and you think maybe, maybe there is something we can do here. He doesn't respond. So you, you follow up in two weeks. Hey, man, just looking to see what's happening, blah, 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 and it goes cold. Nothing, no reply. Do you, do you follow up then? What are you following up with? and how far do you push it before you change direction so you're doing the manual email as you said um the outreach and if that's not working 
do you just let the leak go dead or do you put d- does your funnel then go to you know like a cold lead section where you slowly try to nudge them doing email marketing or something else like I- i'd like to know what happens when they go cold because it's all good and well the guy jumping on saying yeah yeah it's a mark because i know this will happen as well love your stuff blah 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 let's catch up next week and it turns into to to gold and they, he hires you or whatever that that that's all good and well but i want to be the 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 the, the negative guy just now and assume that it goes cold because for many people out there who are starting out those leads do go cold and i want to know what 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 is your next situation after it goes cold the guy's just ignoring you what mm-hmm. do you do yeah so a lot of people who uh, book calls i'd already have them on linkedin um, so that's a platform that I will use, I suppose, if I do want to understand what's going on. So if it's, you know, if I've sent an email out already and they haven't responded, I can wait another week or two weeks and then kind of say to them just, but acting less kind of salesy, but more just kind of like, I want to know what's, what's going on. So like, is everything all right with, with your business? Um, you know, I've still, you know, the site is still at the same place it's at. Just let me know how things are going, like just hoping everything's fine. I think it's because you don't, I don't want to get on people's nerves. Yeah. And I think, you know, when it comes to that second bit of outreach, that's when a lot of people can get on people's nerves because they might just repeat the same email or the same message twice. And I don't really want to do that. So I, I think, you know, these people would have probably seen my initial uh, first uh, outreach after the call and they haven't responded for whatever reason. But at the end of the day, I can't just assume, like you mentioned before, I can't assume it's anything to do with them being ignorant. There could have just been something going on, which is why I think, you know, if you're going to not respond to that initial email, I want to make sure that at least I'm being nice about trying to see if everything's okay. Maybe they've got something going on in their personal life or this, that, and the other, because, you know, you never know. It can be absolutely anything. So um, I will try and do that if it gets to that point, And then hopefully that will at least provide them with with some reassurance or maybe they just need a reminder um, because you never know you know some people are just not as tech savvy some people might have thousands of un, you know unopened emails in their inbox so that's why i try and get on linkedin if i can after the the initial thing and just say you know like i sent you an email a while ago don't know if you got it i um, hope everything's all right like just looking forward to, to hearing back um, and those kinds of things to at least show them that I'm invested in them um, mm-hmm. and to not to show that I'm just trying to take their money. Um, but yeah, that's how I'd approach it. Now, another question I've got before we do wrap up, um, obviously, you know, a funnel, a marketing funnel can be as big as you want that funnel to be. Um, and the, you know, people can go down different paths um you work in your own just now so you might not have actually tried anything but a lot of people are going to be doing this stuff on a massive scale right um you know getting people into funnels are there any softwares that that you've looked at or or you feel that could be useful for people you know i know there's click funnels and all the other kind of ones that are out there but is there anything you're using like the point I'm trying to make is obviously click funnels can can work for a number of different people, but not everyone might have the um, kind of money to to be able to to spend on the big costly software. You've also got Go High Level, and there's various other bits and bobs out there. But what, are you using any software, or is this kind of a manual thing where it's all in your head or down in a document? You know the the kind of leads that you're getting. Um, or have you ventured into looking at software yet? Yeah, I think I, I haven't. And the reason I haven't is because of the the services that I'm offering myself. So there are certain companies who sell, you know, T-shirts and things like that. They'll have a completely different funnel to me and they might need to invest in these types of tools but uh, and software. But I think in my case, I'm very much about personal selling. I'm very much about you know, being someone that someone can trust. So I will take the time um, to do some bits of, of manual, um, which to me don't really seem like too much work because I'm used to it. I'm quite comfortable speaking to people. I'm comfortable quickly sending an email out in a couple minutes. That's not a problem. Um, so, you know, all I have really 
is um, I'll just tell people to to schedule a call with me on Calendly is I think the name and you know that's good because the people have to put in their emails in anyway so it's not like I need to ask them myself they kind of do it themselves to get the call set up and once that call is scheduled it will give me a link already um, for Google Meet and it'll already be on my calendar so I don't really have to do anything um, and they get that as well so really they've kind of scheduled it and all i have to do is just click the link and be there on time um yeah. so you know i don't really have to do too much and i think that's what i like about that kind of tool um but obviously if i was in a situation where you know i want to be going for mass sales or, or or really high volumes then maybe i would have to look into some kind of pay tool but i think even for me you know not having too many clients um but having clients that really believe in me clients that i'm i'm doing good work for i think to me that's more valuable and it means that i can still have more time to to invest in writing up my content more time to invest in videos so you know that's the kind of approach that i've got now um and i think it's been working fine so far so i think it really just depends on what you're trying to get out of like what are your goals um, and then figuring out a process that will help you reach it. Of course, there might be better processes than what I have now currently, but you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is my kind of uh, my kind of approach. You do do what works for yourself. Um, the only thing I would add is, if anyone out there is looking to to kind of get involved with email sequences or text message marketing or um, all of that kind of stuff, there are great tools out there like Go High Level where you can automate a lot of these processes as well where you know people will go into certain funnels you know if they go cold it will then maybe you know do a different nurturing sequence to get them back into uh you know even looking at your stuff again and stuff like that so um there are softwares out there but obviously as i say it, it's it's what works for you you don't always have to spend software if you're not doing it you know, on a massive, massive scale and, and doing what you do works very well for you and you get the calls and, you know, you talk to them in LinkedIn and then, you know, even five out of 10 turn into to guys that you regularly talk to or, or potentially do business with, then why the hell would you need to, to use automation and text message marketing and stuff like that? So, yeah, it really comes down to to <coughs> what works for you and, and also you don't want to load up too much with overheads. Um, where you don't need them, so that no, was good. I, 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 I was, I, well, I'm sorry to to pass the buck on to you um, for pretty much all of this funnel thing, but I think for people watching, they want to hear what you're doing. Is you know, it's 2020. You're starting out on your own, and they'll be curious to hear what your funnel's like, rather than you know potentially me get on a, again about doing this and you know start then email marketing and then you know if, if people open videos then put them into a vi you know people who are more interested in videos and start sending them more videos and all that kind of shit so because that stuff's been repeated time and time again i think for me the raw real-time you know guy that's doing it just now um is going to be the position that many of the people that are watching are currently in um, so it's it's better to hear you know what you're actually doing um, at that point. So appreciate all those points and information that you gave. Um, anything else to add? Is there any other little tips you want to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I think the biggest tip is just you know be yourself because at the end of the day you need to be comfortable in terms of speaking with um, clients because they'll want to speak to you. So I think it's about being comfortable, um, kind of knowing who you are uh, is really important. And don't try and kind of, you know, say fancy things and then not kind of show up when the questions are posed. So always just be yourself and and keep learning and just add value. I think those are the best uh, pieces of advice I've got. Yeah, I think I would tend to agree. People buy into people. Um, and if you can make yourself a nice person and, and approachable then you th th i think that's half the battle so yeah it's uh definitely working for you man and hopefully it continues to work but that is us for episode 17 of seo tales we will be back again next week and what's the topic next week again it's, uh, it's an seo topic i think seo in five years time it'll be a nice kind of 
brainstorm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we will catch you next week for what's going on in ACO over the next five years. Will it change? Will it not? And we will see you then. <laughs>